podcast is Scott Tuzna along with Brian Cron. Today we are talking about working harder and smarter. <laughs> <laughs> Always smarter. Working harder smart. with an intelligent uh, approach yeah. in mind here. Um, yeah. A lot of it comes down to, to my own personal experiences. This past year, I feel like I've kind of dialed things back a bit. Uh, I feel like I've held a lot back in the tank here. And uh, I have to say, a lot of it really comes down to just kind of almost paying too much attention to the research out there that talks about why you should kind of avoid training to failure for the most part. And all this talk about your, your rate of perceived exertion and um, how it affects your, your muscle recovery and performance and all that stuff. And um, I admit there's times where I, I kind of take it too much to heart rather than just kind of help it guide me. Um, yeah. And I feel like I, I, I have been selling myself short this past year, not pushing myself as hard as I, I know I can. And um, I don't want to knock evidence and, and research out there. It, it has a value when you use it properly, I guess, when, when, you, when you treat it for what it is. Um, there was recent research that did shows covered in, in uh, the research review mass this month talking about um, how th there was a study where most of the people were, they thought they were training to failure mm -hmm. or really close to failure. And then they brought in a trainer to, to push them and <laughs> they found that they had like way more reps left in them. So um, what we think is failure. So, so a lot of the prescription out there, the research will say, um, train at a rate of perceived exertion of seven, eight, um, maybe push it to nine, but not push it to 10 too often. So people say, okay, I'm gonna, I think this is a eight or a nine for me. And really it's probably a five or a six. It's yeah. especially based on, on some of that research that we're seeing there. So we're probably, you don't need research to know to, to, to tell you that you're, you're probably not pushing hard enough. A lot of times you just need to to really have a good workout partner with you or a trainer who encourages you to to push that a little bit harder and mm. show yourself what you what you really got and I think this week there's been a few things we're gonna get into that um, I feel my even though I'm starting a little deficit here a little post holiday cutting phase um, so I'm in a deficit I my energy should be a little bit lower but I, I've been having the best workouts ever because of two things that we're going to talk about in a moment. but um, So I've been really working hard, and today I had an experience with my training partner, Rick, who he's doing some leg presses, and our goal was 15 to 20 repetitions. First two sets, he hit 15 reps. And third set, he's like, you know what, man, just... I, there's it. no way I can do 20 here, but it, can you just spot me? And if I can't do it, just give me a little bit of guidance. Like, just push it a little bit to help me go. Well, just having me there... Mm -hmm. was enough to get him, I didn't even touch the thing, and he got five more reps on the leg press on his third set. And this is after doing, we did a lot of legs leading up to that, so his leg should have been spent. So basically he's half ass in those first two mm -hmm. sets there. So um, so he did that, and like, fuck yeah, throw some more weight on there, and I was ready to give her myself, and just, for mm -hmm. me it's all a matter of, it's a mindset thing. Like you get your head in the right frame of mind that you're gonna push yourself to that momentary mm -hmm. muscular failure, especially with exercises like the leg press or leg extension yeah. or bicep curls and just really freaking give her, you have so much more. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the topic of yeah. today that we do have so much more in us. Yeah. And, and this time of year, we got a flood of new people in the gym and a lot of people are there just because they feel like they have to be there and they're just kind of going through the motions. But it's amazing what just pushing myself in the gym what it's done to me, like not only did I have to, yeah. I had to flip the switch to, to push myself, but after it was done, fuck, you feel good. It's like this huge sense of accomplishment. You walk out of there ready to take on the world. It's a, mm. it's a good feeling. Yeah, just um, everyone's always says, always says, you know, work smarter, not harder. And well, I think there's definitely, obviously, truth to that. Yeah, hard work, man. Hard work is the difference maker. I find, especially when people get further along, you know, in their journey, like you just going that extra little bit, and it doesn't mean taking sets to absolute throwing out failure, but just pushing beyond your comfort zone. Um, it's, and it's more than just the physiological, it just get, it builds this momentum of winning. Um, it just, you know, all of a sudden your, your workouts 
feel like they're producing something and that you know that keeps you motivated and keeps you working that much harder the next time and yeah i'm uh older i get man the more i value just hard work yeah yeah 100 percent. you said there the yeah. comfort zone that's yeah. i feel like as that's where i spent the last year was in my comfort zone i never stepped outside of that comfort zone i was kind of like coddling mm-hmm. myself and just and, and you've got to spend some time mm-hmm. in that comfort yeah. zone you can't be trying to step outside 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 all the time um but you gotta have moments yeah. you, you gotta you, really there can be a fair amount of time where you're really trying to push that that envelope yeah. but again i think the smart part comes in where you choose to really yeah give yeah. right very rare am i gonna give her um and and have that same kind of mindset i had on the leg press if i was mm-hmm. squatting or deadlifting and, and yeah. or bench pressing any Anywhere yeah. where I can. I, I've, it happened once where I had to, with the bench mm-hmm. press, <laughs> the barbell down and bang, bang, bang. But yeah, um, yeah that's all it, all it took. You want to be, you got to be smart with that kind of stuff. You don't want to perform it with exercises where there can be a risk of injury. But a mm-hmm. safer movements where you can really test the yeah. limit. And even finding exercises, like I love lateral raises where we've talked before about last set, best set, where you just. Yeah the last set of the exercise, I'm, I'll, I'll hit my rep range, I'll keep going, and the range of motion will get shorter and shorter, mm-hmm. I'll do partials, as soon as I can barely do any partials, I might breathe for five seconds, try to do a couple more partials, just fucking really, mm-hmm. like that's where I know, I had nothing left in, I left everything on the gym floor for that exercise, you're not going to do that for every single exercise, you just got to be picky and choosy, a lot of times saving mm-hmm. that kind of stuff towards the end of the workout, Yeah, um, but you can do a last set, best set, Mm-hmm. For almost every exercise, in the first two sets, you work to failure, and third set, like no. push it. Have, yeah. your, have your partner there to help you. Out. Yeah, definitely one of the best ways to teach yourself to work harder is have a really good partner. Um, I mean, I always like training with people who are bigger and stronger than me. Um, that I always found that really, really motivating. Um, and that, and if, especially if you use the same partner and that you get to know each other and they know where you're, you know, they can push you along and chide you and insult you. I, I, respond, <laughs> I respond well to that. Um, that's, you know, it just creates this good competitive energy. And like, this is still, it's, this is a competition, man. Like, you know, even though if you're not getting up on a bodybuilding stage or, you know, and you're just competing against yourself, you're still freaking competing. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, and I think that's, you have to, you have to kind of keep that edge about this. Like, you know, people have sanitized weight training and they've turned it into something really, that it's just not like it's still it's you know it's not a freaking war of course but it's still it's it's work you know and it's and it's hard, it should be hard work especially when you're further along and you know those gains don't come so easy it's you know you have to work for them mm-hmm. you know and I'm a big believer in that absolutely absolutely and definitely a lot I spent years training alone and I thought it was the best thing ever and then. Uh, it was a visit from Tom Venuto that totally shifted yeah. my mindset, and that was training. Of course, it was a leg day, and uh, yeah, he just He's a beast. he just about <laughs> murdered me. He's like halfway through the workout, I thought the workout was done. He's like, "Oh no, we're gonna keep I going," and, and yeah, again, just, He's such just a finding those absolutely, and it's it's awesome. Like those, I need to surround myself with more guys like like that. It really. They do bring the best out of you. They do. You're like, fuck, I've been coasting all along. There's so much. Because you do it. You go through a workout like that. And you're like, fuck, it's, mm-hmm. you can do it. It's, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely been holding myself back uh, all this time. But yeah, a partner, a good partner, an encouraging partner, and a partner who's not afraid to, like you said, call you out at times. Rick's yeah. called me out. He's telling me I've been half-assing it before. <laughs> and it, I, nothing's gonna light yeah. a fire under me like that. So it's, yeah. it's. I awesome. mean, you know, it can't be done on, on your own, of course. Like if you keep a good logbook and you know you really focus on, okay, I'm gonna beat my logbook this day. You know, I did, you know, 200 pounds for six reps. I'm going to get seven reps. You know, and you just, especially in that one all-out set, and you maybe do some build-up sets, and then you. Just make it happen safely, of course. Yep. Um, like you know, all like those little things can work. It, but there's, you know, that's what I've done for years. But I just whenever I have the opportunity to train with someone else, and you know, someone who I 
click with. It's just it's just better. And I think that the one thing with having a logbook is making sure that you write down like how you felt. Could do you feel like you could have yeah. pushed it more afterwards, or or make a note down that yeah. I want to beat this next time. Like it's yeah. mm-hmm. it's. Uh, it's it's definitely that that can go a long way rather than just trying to slap weight on the bar yeah, and beat it yeah. that way. I can get another rep in there, or mm-hmm. next week I want to do some partials to finish this off. And um, mm-hmm. it's just knowing, knowing. I think we all know deep down inside of us that there, we mm-hmm. can. You can yeah. push more out. Uh, I think if you're a natural, not natural. If you've been an athlete in the past, I think I've referenced before. Like it's. Like for me, I find it easier to to really flip that switch when I'm doing a leg press, leg extension, and when the burn kicks in, I feel like I'm done. I, I can give more, and I, I really relate it back to the sprinting days, especially the 400 meter dash, where Ugh. the last 100 meters is just yeah. you're willing yourself over that line. You feel like you're done after 300, but somehow, some way, you make it to the, the the finish line. That's why I feel like just that burning sensation just keep it going as long as like i know i can keep going i know i'm stopping because they are it burns <laughs> it sucks it sucks but that's why i'm stopping but i know my legs they can keep moving if i mm-hmm. want to do it's just mentally i have to push through that it's not pain it's a it's uncomfort it's discomfort it's mm-hmm. um yeah but it can can definitely work through it yeah, the, the feeling of pushing yep. through that is freaking awesome so yeah. um so yeah definitely most of us chances are we're kind of going through the motions or just even if it's not that it's that we can push a bit harder so having a partner can help having a log book can help um just overall lifestyle is a huge yeah. factor as well you want to touch on that a bit yeah i mean i just uh you know some people legit they they love to train fasted they feel better whatever yeah and more power to you like if someone like myself i don't like that feeling i feel you know hollow i just feel you know, I just can't wait for, I can't wait to get home and eat. Um, so uh, in that case, if, if you're, if you're uh, the same way and you, whatever you can, whatever you do in your lifestyle to make your training the absolute best, I, I say do that. So if you're, if just, if, if, if any type of fasting protocol messes with your training rhythm, freaking don't do it. Don't do it. Like that's priority. Number one is, you know, that's, Whatever people ask me, like, well, you know, I, I hate training fasted. What should I do? I'm like, no. No, yes. <laughs> exactly. No, I, yeah, you should never do something just because it's working for someone else. Try yeah. it. Sure. See how you feel. Um, I've done it. I never used to be able to mm-hmm. <clears throat> to train fasted. There was no way I could train fasted. Then I tried it. Like, I did it. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't particularly enjoy it. Um, I started doing it more so throughout the month of December because like typically I work out at 1130 in the morning up at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. have my two cups of coffee and uh, during the holiday season I was eating a lot and I was eating late so I was waking mm-hmm. up I was waking up feeling like I just had a, a eight course meal I was I was full yeah. in the morning like oh I don't want to eat um, I admit part of the mindset was yeah. you know, skipping breakfast I'll, I'll be fine this is this is good it, it'll help me lose weight but it just ends up my workouts aren't the same and, and mm-hmm. I come home and I'm like super hungry and then yeah. it just snowballs. So uh, can I get through a workout fasted? Yes. Is it optimal for me? Yeah. Fuck, not even close. It's like this past week I've gotten, that's been, that was my, <clears throat> my habits that I'm working on today in our, in our Facebook group is, uh, is getting structure back to my nutrition and making sure I have that pre-workout shake. First two days I've been doing that. Oh my god! Like, I think that's a huge reason mm-hmm. why my workouts have been so good, and, and then having the workout yeah. partners pushing me in addition to that. But I feel phenomenal by having that pre-workout shake in me. Yeah. Uh, the other thing. I'd be, well, go ahead. Yeah. Well, it's like the, any physiological benefit, and legitimately there are some to certainly to extended fast and training fasted. And, but any benefit on that side of the ledger, if it's causing you to have inferior workouts, it's not worth it. Yeah. It's just not worth it. That's not a that's not a, a, a good compromise. You know, hundred percent, man, hundred percent. Yeah. That's like you said. Yeah. It's you got to know yourself. So so yeah. you yeah. may be the person who has it's better for you. You're 
Yeah, eating, eating, eating before eating before your workout hinders your workout. Yeah. I mean, your performance goes down. Then you got don't eat before your workout. If it, yeah. if eating before your workout has a negative impact on your training, don't eat before your workout. But if not eating before your workout has a negative yeah. impact on your training, eat before your workout. I for me, there's no way I especially gauging. I've been doing the same plan for the past four weeks. My workouts haven't been the same as it was the past two, three days here, past three workouts have not been, it's just been off the charts way better. So I've put in way more effort, feel great afterwards. So I, I definitely cranked out more, I probably burned more calories and, and, and definitely gave my body a better chance of, of growing or improving uh, because I had food before the workout. Yeah, yeah. So again, that's um, personal, that's individual, you gotta know yourself and I'm lucky enough to, if I had to work out first thing in the morning, before work, like like within a half hour upon mm-hmm. waking, it's all it's all different. Again, lifestyle is lifestyle factors come into play. Here. So yep. setting yourself up for for success and mm-hmm. how you can handle that best. Absolutely, and it's just so yes, hard work, man. It's, hard work. It's, and sleep. Sleep is the other thing. So. Those have been the two big factors I've been working on this week, and I think both have had. I can't really say if it's one or the other. If it, is it eating, having my pre-workout shake, getting more structure into my nutrition, or is it the fact that I've had stellar sleep for the past few days uh, in bed before nine, getting getting eight to nine hours of sleep each day, wow. solid sleep, just feeling awesome. I've been doing a little meditation before bed, and it's helping me sleep like a freaking baby. So I think that's, to me, that's, that that's has the, the biggest impact. Also increased yeah. my water intake. Like, mm-hmm. So there's all these, just setting my lifestyle up to allow me to give my best effort in the gym. So I think those are, mm-hmm. are huge, huge, huge factors there. <laughs> Don't get teeth pulled. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible for your sleep. It's terrible for your training. I, I strongly recommend against it. All your wisdom is gone now. Oh, fuck yeah. Sorry, any wisdom? <laughs> the good news is that I never had any wisdom. I have no wisdom teeth in my, my head. I'll never have to get any pulls. So I, I, you, you won't really know how wise I could have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the pain meds were making me a little wise, I think. But uh, Oh, yeah. You're brilliant. You're very crafty <laughs> with your, your post. That was awesome. <laughs> very cool. All right, guys. So so make this the, the year that you, you step up your your effort in the gym there. Make sure that you're pushing it. Again, smarter, picking your your moments to really, really give her. And uh, yeah, look forward to to seeing how it impacts. We look forward to hearing your experiences with it. So share your experiences with that and uh, let us know how it goes. Catch you next time for another episode of Physique Master Podcast. Mm